More updates from the ongoing Trump trial as it progresses. There's more gag order nonsense, some spicy moments from Stormy Daniels, ex-attorney on the stand and Trump's defense team. So I figured I could give us one last update to hold us over until next week as Donald is still struggling to keep his eyes open and stay awake, being caught eyes closed multiple times and for long periods of times throughout this trial, so much so that he posted on True Social, he's not sleeping, he's just closing his eyes to listen, which to me sounds a lot like the grandma. Paul who says, I'm not sleeping, I'm just relaxing my eyelids five minutes before they start snoring. However, this trial started again once it got underway with more discussion over possible violations of the gag order as Trump seemingly cannot contain himself and made comments about the jury and witnesses and David Pecker, which included a rather spicy moment between the judge and Trump's defense team where he seemingly decided, I am done with these nonsensical arguments that don't up, hold up to any legal standard by Trump's team that they continuously used to justify his clear-cut violations where the judge told them stick to the facts pretty much. I don't need the storytelling, the gish galloping, the nonsense. Moving into where the testimony started, most of it was Keith Davidson who was Stormy Daniels ex-attorney that helped orchestrate not only the payment she got from Trump but the other affair with Karen McDougal as Trump obviously paid both of them to stay silent so he could fare better in the election where he alluded to Trump being furious when the first lady Karen McDougal's story was leaked in the Wall Street Journal, this was leading up to the election, pretty close to it. Specifically, he was mad about how close to the election it was, showing even more motivation for Trump and his team to go to the lengths that the prosecution is saying they went to, to hide the Stormy Daniels story. And a lot of the testimony today centered around the fact that Stormy Daniels denied the affair in 2018, writing a statement, releasing it officially that called it completely false. And what we learned today is that writing that statement was in the hush money agreement, and it was done at the behest of Trump where she was strongly urged to do so and before she released that statement she had already told multiple media outlets and journalists as far back as 2011 that this had happened and it was revealed that in this payment in the agreement that they had there was a one million dollar provision or a fine that Daniels would have to pay if she breached this contract in any way and it seems that the Trump de defense team in the meanwhile is comfortable running with two kinds of defenses simultaneously. One is just make everyone try to question the ethics or morals of those testifying. You know, if they think they're more slumbags than we are, maybe we'll get away with this. And the second is, you know, if we show that others have done it, will look less bad by comparison that way. When Trump and his team are not showing anyone who did it in the lead up of an election while using campaign funds that they were lying about using to hide an affair to influence votes to win the presidency. As Trump's lawyer spent most of his time pressing Stormy Daniels' ex-attorney about the other celebrity clients he's worked for and some of the agreements that they came to have. And I wanted to end with a clip of Trump outside of the courtroom trying to lie about the gag order and what it means and prevents him from doing to save face and back out of having to testify. Well, I'm not allowed to testify. I'm under a gag order. I guess, right? I can't even testify at all. Now, we're going to be appealing the gag order. I, I'd love to answer that question. It's a very easy question. The easiest question so far. But uh, I'm not allowed to testify. So there you have it. He spent weeks saying he would testify. He campaigned on it. He was saying it in his speeches. And now he's trying to lie about the gag order. The gag order prevents him from publicly talking about jurors or witnesses. There's, for one, no cameras or microphone in the courtroom, so it's not public in the first place. And two, he wouldn't be talking about jurors or witnesses. He would be talking about the case. There's no prevention in this to keep him from testifying. He just knows he would get absolutely torn to shreds. The evidence is mounting up against him. There's not really an explanation, especially for his actions in this, and he needs some excuse to back out gracefully. If you enjoyed this video, we're Social Society. We're a commentary channel influenced by politics, society, and the economy. We are pretty left-leaning on this channel, but we're open to our right-wingers as well. The biggest thing here is having conversations that get everyone to the bottom of the truth. If that sounds like something that could interest you, consider smashing that subscribe button, leaving us a like, or even commenting on this video. We even have memberships available as low as $3 if you'd like to support because the only way we become a society is together.